Welcome to the Wolf Keeper. A show that's just about everything that you can maybe think about. Everything that you can feel that's inside of your heart. What I need for you to do right now is spend the next hour relaxing. Just stop your day before you go into 12 o'clock. And I just want you all to close your minds, open your hearts. And relax and go on this journey with me. It's a beautiful place that you're about to go. Because I want to make you feel. I want to just open you up and think about some things you never really thought about. Right now. The Wolf Keeper. Come on. Good morning, y'all. Come on. It's the Wolf Keeper Show. Get ready. Come on. Let's go. Yeah, Woo. yeah, it's the Wolf Keeper Show, uh, your boy, Tordiano Sanzoni, yeah, Chanel Nell, my boy Tyrone Scott, somewhere rocking the, the doggy dogs, Denzel's in his house, Shaq and Shaq. And for all the people out there that love us, we love you back. Thank you all. Get ready for an amazing show. With the Wolf Keeper. Get ready. Here we go. Uh. a lot more smaller dogs and 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 tinier purse s dogs doing that butt scoop which indicates uh anal gland issues is this a, is this an issue with big dogs too like say 120 pound rot that's just like a, you know really almost a horse in many ways is this dog is it across all breeds it, 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 
it goes across all breeds, but yes, you're right. Sometimes it's more prominent in smaller breeds. Smaller breeds are more complicated because they have bred down on their sides from generations. So everything, you know, when you start messing up with nature, you know, you've got, you come into different problems. Like you have a lot of dogs with like flat faces who they're having a lot of like breeding issues to the point that some breeds, they're banned on different countries. You know, like, you know, dogs with flat faces like Pekingeses and English Bulldogs and, and Pugs, they're banned on some countries because overbreeding and selective breeding have gone away, you know, go, go wrong. The same happened with the, you know, the, the little animals. The smaller dogs, sometimes they've been bred just to be small without taking in consideration other, other parts of their anatomy. So they could have, you know, a, a, a little more problems. And, uh, and, uh, and usually, most of the time, larger dogs, they tend to be more active and get more exercise. So that, you know, that have everything. You know, when you, if you go and walk and jog every day, your whole body is going to work better. But if you're like at the size of a little Maltese and all you do is sit on a couch and watch TV, you know, you get like a human that will be all day on the couch watching TV. You will have mobility problems, you know, and all kinds of problems. Correct. You know, I'm trying to stay away from the book subject. <laughs> well, I'm very so that's like the first thing on my mind. Well, I think this, correct. this is you super know, so helpful that, that, for that, everyone. But, you know, because I think a lot of people have been to a family house party or a birthday party, and it's sort of, you know, the older lady that, that doesn't groom or, or do much for the dog, and you see the dogs, like, scooting on the carpet, and you're like, what's that? And, you know, now for the listeners and viewers, same playing issues, yeah? Correct, correct. That is sometimes, that's the way they resolve it, but if you check and they keep them uncomfortable, and you see them biting, biting their tail and going nervous might be because the, those glands are a little, a, a little impacted. And by default, that should be taken care of by a vet. You know, mm. by a vet if it's a problem. But groomers, we are qualified and trained to kind of check it. So if it's on the, on the, on the bracket where it's just easily released automatically when you put like warm water and a little pressure, it's fine. But if we notice that they are impacted or infected, we send them right to the vet. And that, that's actually the person. Who that's amazing because then that brings upon, because I have short hair dogs. Tammy, you have a short hair dog. Yes, uh, I have a question, uh, Jorge, regarding uh, wait, uh, short hair dogs. Hold, hold on, hold, hold that question one second, Tammy. So, because I just want to point out um, before we get to your question, because Jorge is bringing upon some good points. You have anal gland, because it's great. You had never brought Ali to the room before. Correct. So the anal so gland uh, work anal, was all done by the vet. Anal gland work. But then the other thing, too, nails. Because sometimes people allow the nails to get so I was, long. I was literally clipping her nails with, with a regular human nail clipper. Right. So you got, we got anal, nail, and ears that can easily be done by a professional. I just want to point oh, that out sure. to our listeners. Because a lot of times people feel that they have a short hair dog. You don't need to do that. So, all right, Tammy, go ahead with your question. Okay, so uh, my question, uh, because I do have a short-haired dog, a uh, French bulldog, and uh, I know that obviously if they're, you know, physically soiled, you would need to give them a bath. But, and I give my dog a bath once a month, but what would you recommend for a dog who, you know, basically is not visibly soiled? How often do you recommend giving them a bath? Or well, hey, Tammy, I, Tammy, I miss, I miss. Oh, I was saying. Yeah, but uh, I kind because, of missed half of your question. Sorry. Oh, I was saying uh, because I have a short haired dog and it's a small breed dog. And it's a French bulldog because my previous dog was a, uh, a big uh, breed dog. How often do you recommend giving uh, a small breed dog who's not obviously physically soiled, uh, how often do you recommend giving them a bath? I currently give my dog a bath once a month. 
Do you recommend it more often or less often? Or Listen, you know, I always say when the dog is no longer huggable, even a bath, you know, it depends on, on, on the activity of the dog. So, you know, if you have a house where the dog can be rolling on grass, that's usually a natural cleansing. Now, if you live on 10th Avenue like I live in New York City, believe me, you take the dog for a walk and the dog is filthy. So, you know, it depends on that. What is very important is that, that dog shampoo are very different pH than the human shampoo. Like our mm. shampoos are designed to remove the oils of our scalp because we constantly produce it. Dogs, they don't produce oils constantly. So their shampoo is actually dirt that our shampoo that is designed to remove dirt, but not the natural oil. So always like the, the pet shampoo, it is still better than the most expensive human shampoo to use on dogs. That's oh, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's just like how uh, some people think that they uh, can use human toothpaste on dogs, and it's not. Correct, that is Oh, that, that, which that brings me to another point. That's another reason if you have a short haired dog to bring them to the vet, because um, teeth, nails, ears, and No, butt. but if you can do those things at home, why would you? Like, I cut my dog's nails, I brush his teeth every day, I clean his ears out with the solution. So if you have a dog that doesn't necessarily have to uh, go for those things because you are able to do it, why would you have to take them? Well, to I, yeah, uh, correct. But you're not taking the dog to the grooming, but you are grooming your dog. So oh, you know, it is not like, correct. So every single dog needs grooming. Who does it is whoever is qualified. Some oh, dogs are, you know, you know, so you are qualified. You know how to do the nails. You know how to use ear, ear products to clean the ears. You, so, you know, you are doing whatever the, you know, a groomer will do. So, you know, you are grooming your dog, you know. So, when they say how often they need to be groomed, they need to be groomed a lot. Whoever grooming, you know. And they, with a mild dog shampoo, you can wash a dog every four days. Well, yeah, so that's why, because that's why I didn't know, like, if there was a certain amount that was too frequent. Like, he doesn't, uh, like, if I take him out to the park and he's rolling around, you know, in the grass or whatever, then he'll get a bath after that. But in general, if he's just in the house or if he's just outside in my backyard, which is pretty clean, then he's not really getting, you know, soil. So generally, I just give him uh, a bath uh, once or twice a month. So that's why I was just wondering. Correct. And then you grab a washcloth. Yeah, then you grab a washcloth in between. And you're like, you oh, know, yeah, wipe their down. bodies and their bodies. Yeah. I use the dry shampoo to wipe them down like every day. But as far as actually putting them in a tub, I usually just do that once a month. Yeah. Good. And that's more than enough. And you know, short hair dogs, they still shed. And oh, my short hair dog sheds more than my other dog did. Like his hair is fine, but he's. Yeah, but they, 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 they leave it like a little nest. So that's what I do when they say, well, I don't need a brush for my short hair dog. And I say, yes, you need the right brush. You need a red, curry, a rubber brush. Because yes, what do you do with that? Correct. That's your strength the hair follicles, and when the hair follicles are stronger, they retain the hair much longer. So I don't care if it's a chihuahua, or it's a French bulldog, or a pug, they do shed a lot. And, you, and I just want to go back, Tammy, what you said earlier, um, and I said this in the opening, that even though you groom your dog at home, you do a great job at it, and you, you do teeth and do everything else, um, to the listeners out there, grooming is a form of training because your dog could be totally great with you doing all those things, but if Jorge or another professional groomer does that so, those same, exact same um, task, your dog could totally react. So grooming becomes a way to constantly make sure your dog is comfortable with being touched. If you truly have a dog that's a pet, um, it's a great way to constantly socialize a dog, um, as Jorge pointed out. Um, some dogs have um, anxiety when they're left at a groomer because there's all kinds of different things going on. There's dogs that are there that are stressing. There's the sounds of the blower. 
there's this new person touching me. There's all grooming is a whole experience by itself. People kind of trivialize it and make it seem like it. Oh, just bringing a dog to get um to get to get to look pretty. But, but for the dog, it's a huge, big experience with a lot of different um, visual stimulation, um, audible stimulation, and scent stimulation. Why I would strongly encourage um, people to bring their dog to the vet. I'm worried. A thing that's going to my mind too. Hey, to I'm sorry to the groomer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to the to the to the groomer. Um, Ray, I want to ask you too. Chanel, are you still there? Yes. Yes. Oh. Chanel, are you yes, there? Chanel's there. She, she might be on mute. She. But I was going to. I know she brings her dog to the. Can you hear me? I'm here. So Chanel, I know you bring Bentley to the groomer like every week. It seems like. But um, oh, Toriana, could you have you? Month. Really? I was doing it like every two months. Ah, uh, but then his groomer was saying that he gets mad at right. So, and then it was um, just the kind of hair that does warrant an uh, actual groomer. Like my right. lady is not necessarily going to need a groomer, a professional groomer, because I can do those same things. But when you have a dog like Bentley who does require a professional groomer then it does make sense that you would have to take care of like every month or whatever. Right. I mean, you have to work in between grooming appointments. Like when you go get your hair done, you don't like just sit there and don't patch your hair and you go to the salon. Or wait, you know, they, 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 you got the dog. If I don't, you know, I just got a hair done today. If I don't touch my hair in four weeks, that's a, it's going to be a mess. So, you know, learning how to keep your dog in shape between uh, grooming appointments, you know, is, is, is very important. And going back what uh, you were saying before, you know, is that grooming is one of nature's strongest way of bonding. When yes. you think about, you know, mama lion and baby lion, you know, yeah. how do they connect to grooming? You know, yeah. so like, grooming is a way that nature shows love. So when you are grooming your dog, that's a moment that. that you are connecting with your pet emotionally. I love that. They don't only see you as the person Boom. who feeds them, but they see you as their care, handsome the caretaker. That's why, Boom. you know, Again. I make a living, you know, grooming dogs, but I always say how important it is that you groom your dog at home a There's so, our boom moment. Like, Jorge, that, so you this know? is Jorge, this is leading yeah. me to my next question that uh, caregiving and bonding through grooming are, are a universal truth. How dog whisper do you have to be? How often are you dealing with dog aggression, a bite, a scenario where this dog is, is borderline aggressive issues and you're able to calm him down through uh, you know, touching. And I, I guess what I'm saying is, how often are you coming into aggression problems, and, and how often are you able just to calm the dog down and, and power through it? Well, you know, like uh, when you work at a salon, you are more exposed to it, and you assess the dog. You know, you give the dog a chance. You know, you you, you approach the dog. You give. You know, a lot of time you just let the the you know the owners go, and you say, you know. Be able to groom your dog. Let let you're a new person. Usually, you gotta build a relationship with a dog that is gonna last mostly for the the length of the dog's life. So you know, you add some dogs you are able to build, and some dogs you don't. You know, I've been grooming professionally in New York for like 26 years. If a dog doesn't like me, I'm like, okay, you can go for somebody else. <laughs> I, 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 I'm a little to the point that, you know, I've been working long enough, but, you know, but at the beginning when I worked at the salon, I had to, you know, and that's where you use all your skills, you know, that's when, when, you know, you learn that you need to connect with the dog. And I always say the first thing you do with a, with a dog before you start working
does because your your grooming has more personal contact than the average vet has with with an animal. Correct. So I always say it's like dancing. You know, when you dance, it's always somebody who leads that dance, and that has to be you, not the dog. Mm -hmm. yeah. But like, like if you wanna like grab a, a bull for to cut a nail, you don't push the uh, you don't pull the leg. So you put example. the dog. You uh, lead it into position slowly. It's like you're dancing. Or he's like, Argentinian. You, you know, it's tango. Yeah, yeah, what? You're Argentinian. It's tango, right? <laughs> <laughs> correct, correct, <laughs> correct. Yeah. So, but you know, you try to be to make it a dance and not a wrestling match. So you know, you kind of move with the dog. You know, it's all when you analyze a dog grooming styles. Ninety-nine percent of them, they don't have sharp corners. They're all made out of cur curves. So you got to think that your movement it can. It shouldn't have sharp turns. You should always move on round, you know, just to keep like a, a dance with your dog, just to keep harmony, just not to get the scare. You know, you 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 gotta focus, you know. That's what I don't every time I work at a salon, I never allow them to have a TV. I'm like, you know, you have to focus. Your focus has to be on the dog. And you both, because they know when you're focusing on them, and they will give you that attention back, you know. So it's, it's you know, it's, you got to love, I always say, you know, when talking about business, I say the way that I spell the T about the grooming business is with three T's, you know. It is Twitter, uh, tips, and teeth. I'm like Twitter because, you know, Social media is the new way of word of mouth. Tips, because you gotta get everybody happy to make extra money. And teeth, because a dog will critique you with their teeth if you're doing something wrong. Amen. So you gotta be on point. Hey, you yeah. gotta be on point. Right. Because I'm like, an owner can, can like criticize you on Yelp, a dog will criticize you with their teeth. So, oh. you know, I love you that. You got no choice by, by being on top of point. Jorge, you said, you, you said a boom moment for me, um, a big explosion moment when you said grooming is a way to show love, and that's so true. That's, and, and when you said that, it brought me with this concept that the more people that can groom your dog is the more people that are showing your dog love. So that's, there's a great reason to go out and get your dog groomed, and you can even have multiple groomers that have just – to constantly having your dog touched and socialized to avoid your dog from being in a situation of attacking a human. But, um, Jorge, I want to, what, what I want to dig into, and I know we talked about this, you and I talked about this before is you being from Argentina down there growing up with dogs. Um, cause you've been, you're like me, you've been dealing with dogs since you were a child. Can you just, I want to, I want everyone just to know how deep you really are into the game. Cause you're just not a groomer that went to school and then also we start doing this. This is something you don't just groom dogs. You show dogs too. Can you tell us a little bit just about your background in Argentina and you, your, your dog yeah. showing experience and what brought you to New York? Let me start from the very, very beginning. I was a very fat baby. So when my mother was pregnant, she needed to be like resting most of her pregnancy. And she had a little chihuahua that slept on her belly the whole nine months. And my grandmother used to say, get that dog out of there. That kid is going to look like a dog. And my mother was like, no, that little dog rested on. So I always say that I was born with the heartbeat of a dog because I, I felt that. the heartbeat of that chihuahua as much as I felt oh, my mom's heartbeat. I love that. She was in That's so bed, cute. That you know, so most fresh. of the dog. I, of course, my grandmother right was now. like, don't you need to be outside? That kid is going to look like a It's going to have a dog so face. And it's, but I, since I was a baby, I had a connection. And I always say yes, because I before I was born, I could feel the heartbeat of a dog. Ooh. So all my life, I was very, very connected. Don't put a cat near me, because we never got along. But I, like, but I was always, so when I was 11, you know, I, I had uh, this lady who was almost part of my family who lived right across 
around the corner from me. And every single day after I would run from school, do my homework, and by 3 p.m. I would be on her house watching the stories on TV and brushing dogs because she bred Shih Tzu's and Pekingese. Nice. So and I was, you know, about about that. so I started there every single day. I would go there from 3 p.m. to like 8 p.m. at night when I needed to be back home. I just would be working with dogs. And then, you know, I got older. I was one, I was the youngest job at the National Dog Show of Chihuahuas when I was 16 years old. I had studied and I became a judge and, uh, and I was about 16. So then, you know, well, then I got, I start, you know, breeding here and there. You know, I would have a, a show dog and then, you know, I would have puppies, you know, keep some. And so I've always been around dogs. Then I moved to New York, speak one word in English when I moved here. And I was like, I'm going to be one delivering pizza. I need to do something else that doesn't require English. So I was like, at that point, I turned my hobby to like my profession. I've never done nothing else but uh, work with dogs or talk about dogs. I love, how many years, Jorge? I mean, how many years? Well, I, you know, I, I believe that I've been living in New York for about 26 years. Wow. So 20, 26 years of grooming. That's how long I've been. So, so you've seen you've seen the entire industry like when it was like low in grooming to expensive. I mean, because sometimes people are shocked by how much it costs to groom a dog. Um, Chanel has a doodle. What what would you charge? What what's doodle prices in New York? A minute. I, I don't know. I yeah. I, listen, prices are different. Go from groomer to groomer. I've been working a long time. I wrote them. We haven't talked about my book yet. That is the best. That is the the most successful grooming book in history. It's, it's translated on seven different languages all over the world, and uh, and it's a step by step dog grooming book. So you know, I, yeah, I did is a bunch of TV shows. So you know, I'm more expensive. Right, and, and groomers are probably like hairdressers. Depending on uh, who your hairdresser is, you may pay a lot more than another hairdresser because you have more experience and you have more exposure. So I'm pretty sure it's probably similar to how there's a big uh, difference in price ranges for hairdressers. It's probably the same Correct. for groomers. Correct. Right. That's, 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 uh, that's, uh, that's a mean that I'm better than other groomers. There are tons of like great groomers. I'm just lucky and smart enough to have positioned myself on a, with certain clients where I get to charge, you know, five times more than the regular groomer. Uh, so, Jorge, I have a grooming question. Actually, one of the listeners has a question Sammy Mac wanted to know uh, if you have a dog that has allergies, do you recommend a certain uh, dog shampoo for that dog? Yes, there are plenty of hypoallergenic uh, shampoos for dogs. Uh, I had good experience with shampoos that they're uh, based with an eucalyptus scent. I kind of like that because the shampoos that they're not scented at all, to me, I don't need to smell clean. Yes, like, I have to, you know, I have to I smell like, like my dog. Exactly. Yeah, I want Billy to smell like I, I want to know that. He's a thon. He goes from sneeze a right. thon I put on lotion and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so you got to be like careful about that. But like, I found that as shampoos that they're based on, on uh, eucalyptus or mint or peppermint, they make the dog look fresh and they're less... Uh, you know, they are yes, more hypoallergenic, but there are a lot of brands. Yeah. I have a coconut shampoo that I use on my dog that he loves and it smells really good and it works well for his The health industry is huge. The amount of shampoos nowadays, not that's like when they used to say, oh, you got to groom your dog every six months. 
It's because the pet industry didn't have that many shampoos that they have now for like, you know, regular use, hypoallergenic use, you know, all kind of different, like white dogs, black dogs, you know. Uh, there are all kind of shampoos now. So you need to tune in to the right shampoo, but there are a lot sort of like good, good, good hypoallergenic shampoo. Jorge, I want to go back to what I asked earlier, because um, I know that there's groomers can vary from a pet cold groomer to the person that's grooming in their basement to like groomers, like for example, I know that a groomer um, like Chanel, like like you you bring your dog to a groomer, it's not unheard of for a person to pay up to like two hundred to three hundred for even like a German Shepherd or a Poodle, as low as I, my friend who. The highest he might charge is like thirty five, forty five. But um, Jorge, can you just talk about that too? Because sometimes people are even shocked when a person charges. Like for example, at, here for us, if you have a German Shepherd, we're going to charge anywhere from seventy five or higher. And sometimes people are like, oh, why isn't this like thirty, forty bucks? Um, like like Petco. Can you just because I want people to understand the the, the pricing because grooming can be expensive depending upon the breed of dog that you have, and especially if you're using someone that's not a chain or big box like Petco or PetSmart. Well, you know, like, uh, first, like, due to, like, our economic war situation, it means that on big chain, like, you know, Petco or PetSmart, you can find competitive groomers that they're working there part-time to get health benefits. For example, you know, so uh, th then you can find groomers that they're really unqualified and they get jobs at, you know, big companies because they do the inside training and within, uh, you know, four weeks, they, at most, they put you to groom dogs and those are the ones who will have accidents. So you have everything. That's why it is important you talk to groomer. Do not go by you know, how fancy the salon is, but how qualified the groomer is, you know. Grooming is something that it, it doesn't require certification in most states. So anybody can just grab a clipper and call himself a groomer. We are really trying to work against that because hairdressers need a, a you know, a certification. So anybody who works with sharp tools around any kind of living creature should be sent. So more than that paying attention of how the salon looks like, you need to pay attention who is going to be working on your dog because you will find the best groomer at the, at the most, at this tiny little place in the middle of nowhere or, you know, the best groomer anywhere. You got to talk to the groomer. And yes, prices, they depend a lot on what area of the country are you living in. You know, there everybody needs grooming. Every dog needs grooming, and every groomer needs a job. So, if I'm charging, for example, three hundred dollars an hour, like I charge in New York, but I work in Manhattan only, and if I move to, let's say, a state that the average income is much lower, but I just like the quality of life or or whatever, I will have to charge accordingly of what is the average. You so know, what's, what's the average? average? They what's the average? A bit more or low. What's the price? In, in the, I mean, I'm, I'm picking because I, I find that fascinating because you groom. You're a celebrity groomer. You groom, you groom Ralph Lauren's dog. You groom P Diddy's dog. I mean, your your list is big, and I I mean, so you are the man. That's why I want people to understand that we have the groomer on the on the phone. It's like my friend, like in the in the hair, my friend Johnny who does Michelle Obama's hair. It's seven hundred dollars per cut, and it's not just because it's Michelle Obama. When you see him cut, you're like, I didn't know scissors can move like that, <laughs> you know. So like, I've been watching your videos, I've seen your resume. You're a beast. What what could a person? Because all groomies not created equal. Like if a person wants a really top show cut for their, you know, their their poodle, what could what what's the highest you ever seen? The, the highest price yeah is like three hundred dollars an hour yeah okay that, that I so mean I know that I just, sometimes... an hour. but you might have a poodle breeder 
who lives in the middle of the, on the countryside, outside, you know, whatever state, and she lives there, and she has 20 dogs herself, but you're a neighbor who has a poodle, and she will give you a, like, top, top, top quality grooming for maybe, you know, 60 bucks. So it does, whatever, like cities like New York, LA, and, and Miami are probably the most expensive cities um, to live with, and, and they're most expensive cities to get your dog grow, you know, and, and uh, you know, that's, that's the, the, the reality. My, one of my best friends, the, the lady who started me basically on, on grooming, on getting a job at a grooming shop here, she moved to Atlanta, you know, and they are outskirts of Atlanta. So her prices are are lower than they used to be in New York, but her quality is the same. Right. So Jorge, I had a question and it's less economic than it is cultural. And I appreciate that, you know, the prices for Manhattan grooming are different than Lexington, Kentucky. But what's the cultural difference between dog owners in Manhattan and South America, Argentina? Is there, are Americans radically different about dog ownership? I believe that Americans are more over the top on everything. And that's not always a good thing. But, you know, I'm like, you know, but, but we are trend, we are trends. You know, we're trendsetters. So whatever you see here at a hundred percent, then it will tickle down to other countries like Argentina at a, at a 60, you know? Like here, people, you will see somebody, I have seen designers of, of dog dresses that they charge four or $5,000 for a dress for a dog. You know, and I'm like, okay, that's the yearly income on, on, on somebody in a many country. So, but doesn't mean that the talent is less. So those things, those trends will tickle down, down to everywhere in the world. And somebody will be making, you know, a dog dress with a, with a dress that their younger daughter doesn't wear no more. So they will be creative. So it's not always about how different we are, it's like we, like the world, the world look at us. Unfortunately, sometimes they are looking at us now, you know, saying like, what the hell are you <laughs> But, Why you know, but already? historically, <laughs> we are a country, you know, the U.S., we are a country that we were an example of many fronts. And that included fashion. So, so you know, uh, so that, like, Go back, like we are trendsetters. Whatever Absolutely. we do here, right. eventually other countries will do. Jorge, I want to ask you. Um, I want to talk about two things before we end this show. Um, one, if I want to ask you about something personal, and I want to ask you about cats. Mm, cats. Okay. Which should we go first, personal or cats? Uh, you choose. Tammy, you choose. Get the cats out the way first because Jorge doesn't like cats anyway. All right. Let's get the cats out the way first. All right, Jorge. Um, beyond popular belief, I'm a dog person. Greg's a dog person. But the secret that we have, we have a battle of cats. So I have, I got my cat, my, my gorgeous Himalayan, and Greg, the one upper that he is, had to go out and get a knockoff of my cat. It's a rag doll, which is more trendy, popular uh, uh, breathe them in the land, but continue. So, my grooming cats is a whole nother world. Do you, one, do you groom cats? And then two, um, is that something that you recommend for people to do groom cats on their own? Because cats can get pretty feisty and they do all kind of crazy things if you get them in water. Yes, I groom cats like most of my grooming life. When I was working in a salon, I did groom cats. If you're talking about expensive, grooming cats rates are way more expensive. Oh, grooming and cats that's is not cheap. That most, <laughs> like 90% of the cats, I don't know, 80% of the cats want like 
to, to they don't like to leave their house most most guys so when you take them to the groomer you know they are really not happy plus cats they do believe they're better than us you know they're i they're you know they're always like a bitchy wife you know i'm like <laughs> You just have to cater to them, you know. It's no way around. A dog is like a dog is like <laughs> us guys, you know. They're easy, you know. You just yeah, they're easy to treat. You give them, a, you give them a treat, and like oh, we forgot about everything else. Like cats, no cats hold the grudge, you know. Cats right. will find a way. Yes, that's where they got that term. She's acting catty because that's how cats are. <laughs> and, and you know, so you know, but so that's what is more important that you like cats. You can rely on 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 cat groomers as much because the cats want to enjoy it. So it is more important that you do take regular care and you brush your cats at home. And you should really never like you can learn how to groom your dog at home. I can say that safely. Cat skin is like rice paper. You should not even try to shave uh, your cat at mm. home. That is definitely a very, very dangerous uh, like Cause, situation. Because Jorge, yeah, grooming, it's grooming, super grooming cats is dangerous too, right? You can you can cat cat scratches, cat bites. I mean, you can easily. I mean, I know oh, people. Yeah. I know oh, people yeah. have been hospitalized because of cats. Mm. No, correct, correct. Grooming cats is way more difficult than grooming dogs. You know, and I, you know, I, that was the first thing I quit it, as soon as I was able to. Right. I was like, oh, no, the, the, at the moment that I knew I had enough clientele of dogs that I could refuse to groom cats, I never touched them. Corey, how much would you charge me? And I, and I like them. I'm like, I don't say that I don't like cats. I just a no person. I, I don't know you. When I grew up, it was no way that you had a dog and a cat household. The only time we had a cat at home it was when one of my dogs brought him in his mouth. When they cats didn't like dogs didn't like cats when I was growing up. There's all like being nice with each other. That to me is a new world. Oh, because sure. when I grew up, you either had dogs or you either had cats. Right. Corey, so for a Himalayan, uh, my Himalayan in Manhattan, and I want you specifically to groom him, how much is that? I, I don't groom cat, but then we start at $250 probably. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the same about out here in Chicago, like Himalayan, $250. To, I know my friend, yeah. she's charging like $300 to groom a Himalayan. So there's, anyone then, that wants to be a cat groomer, there's then, money out there. Tammy, I think that yeah, should be one of your new jobs, like your, like, your retirement job. See, <laughs> I know. You should become a cat yeah. groomer. You know what's the like, secret to brush them? You need to <laughs> spread, like, you need to have, like, a water bottle and spritz water on, on their coat because cat hair is very elastic. So when you, like, mix them with water before you brush them, the mats come, like, right out. If you put, like, a couple drops of conditioner and a, and a spray bottle with water and you Spread them around and then you brush them. The mats can like much easier. Wow. Yes. yes. Um, Jorge, I want to ask you some personal things. I've been um, cyber stalking you. Is this true that I what I found about a stand up comedy career that you study stand up comedy? Yes, I did workshops about it. I I I love. You know, I, 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 I love people, you know, and I'm a funny guy. So I always wanted it to, to like learn. And to be quite honest, before I did my first TV show, it was the grooming competition, right? And every other groomer, the 12 contestants, they took six weeks to like learn the latest grooming techniques and this and that. I took six weeks to take acting classes and stand up comedy classes because I was like, I need to be good TV. I'm like, I'm I love that. TV. I'm Woo! Like, I'm good. But I went, I took six weeks of intensive acting classes and stand up comedy because I was like, I need to be quick on my feet because I'm like, I, I'm already running with a couple of disabilities here. I'm like, I'm Latino, I got a thick accent. 
I'm like, I need to let these people like me. So I need to have a couple extra tricks to be on TV. Jorge, so, you know, that's when I, 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 I took class. Jorge, for the listeners and viewers, what, uh, uh, what competition reality did you compete on? Just so they can check it out on, on uh, check you out. It, it was on, it was like a zillion years ago. It was on Animal Planet. It, Animal it, Planet. it was called Groomer Passage. I know. And, uh, yeah. Can can our viewers so, check that out somehow? And I, I saw you on Groomer Has It, which that was on. Yeah. I that was I, mean, I wish it. they hadn't taken that show off because that was a very intense show because that's I I've, I've been in the industry for twenty years and then until I saw that show I never realized how intense it is with grooming because it's a super stressful job. I mean yeah. I I unfortunately. In 20 years, I've known groomers that have actively poked animals in the eye with the scissors, cut off ears. I know people that have extracted butts and gotten um, fecal matter in their mouth and been hospitalized. I mean, there's been bitten in the face. Yeah. I mean, grooming is like, there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong with grooming. Um, so much respect to you. I'm going to ask you another question. Um, can you talk about, too, because you are – a certified counselor for the Anti-Violence Project Hotline. Is that is that true? Correct. Yeah, that was back in 97 uh, that I got, I, you know, I trained in New York as, a, as a, to be a, a phone operator for the Gay and Lesbian Anti-Violence Project. So um, I never knew how much those skills were going to, like, like, uh, be good for me for life in general because when you working with dogs and you talk with the owners, you know, it's like just now more than I do house calls, your part counselor. Everybody has a problem. Absolutely. And everybody needs a yep. ear to talk to, you know. Yep. And I'm like, and uh, a lot of people, you know, dogs are the greatest equalizers. You know, dogs don't care how famous or infamous are you, you know, how hard you know, how bad you were treated outside, you know, what are your problems? The dogs will just give you love and condition. So, you know, a lot of people really, more than times, like now, they have relied on their dogs a whole lot more than, than before. And um, so, so, you know, having that training that I didn't do it for that purpose, I did it because I wanted it to help my community, but, you know, it gave me the tools to be a good listener. Even if you, like, I never shut up, I can listen to other people in any of That is so super amazing. Uh, Jorge, in closing, um, before we let you go, um, for all our listeners from around the world, everyone that's watching on Facebook, Instagram, Podbean, all our different 14 platforms, what are just, can you give a person, like, maybe three things that they should look for when picking their groomer? Well, you know, feel the vibe. Feel how you vibe, you and your dog react to the group. It's somebody who is going to be working with a member of your family. So think like you checking for somebody to, like when you check, interview a teacher or a babysitter. Or a of your children. Your so, you know, correct. So the dog, process, the process of finding a good dog groomer, it should be paying attention. You know, don't just go online and book an appointment with somebody you don't like. Have, meet them and, and see how, you know, your dog feel about it. And then ask for, ask for certifications. Ask, you know, ask to see where they learn how to grow. What is their experience? Nowadays, every, nobody has an excuse not to have pictures of the work they have done. Mm, and then right. check the salon. I'm like, the salon should be kept as clean as your hair salon. Yep. You should be expecting the same hygiene from your dog groomer that you expect from your hairdresser. Yes. So, you know, if somebody doesn't let you see where they work, I will, I will think it twice. If, some, if you, you know, uh, like we have grown, we know better that not to be living, you know, you wouldn't leave your kid or your nephew uh, uh, on somebody's doorstep and say, okay, I'll pick it up in five hours without knowing where they're going to be. I just feel that we need to be proactive 
on, on the groomer certification, on the hygiene of the place, and on like our all around feeling about it, you know. I agree. That 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 that's that's so on point. Um, I thank you. This is so super informative. When are you going back to me? When are you leaving the mountains? No, I go back home every Monday and come back on every Thursday. So I guess yeah. about everything that is so awesome. Well, I, I want to thank Jorge thank for your Jorge. money. Yes, thank you, Jorge, for all your Thanks, Thank you, thank you Tim. Thank you, listeners. Go out there, find yourself a groomer. Because I love what Jorge said. It's a way of showing love to your animal. Because I thought about that. Gorillas groom each other. The lions groom each other. Go groom somebody. Love somebody. It's Saturday. Have a fun day. I'm the Wolf Keeper. Catch us tomorrow, 11 a.m. for another fun podcast, broadcast. I'm yours, Toriano Sanzoni. Ciao, Bela. Thank you all. Ciao, Bella. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs>